is cybersecurity hard and how can I break into cybersecurity with no experience? This is going to be a video for those of you who are just starting out in cybersecurity and maybe need some guidance on where to start as well as understanding how hard it may be to start learning cybersecurity concepts. And apologies in advance for the nature noises, but hopefully they can add some soothing ambiance to this video. But first I wanted to share my experience getting to cybersecurity since I think this will ring true for a lot of people who are just getting started. So for those of you who don't know, I actually graduated college with an IT degree. So I didn't have any cybersecurity experience. All my previous internships were either data science related or software engineering related. So I personally had no experience in cybersecurity before I got my first job after college. I did take a few cybersecurity courses specifically on digital forensics and network security as part of a program that my school offered as well as just general IT electives that you have to take to graduate. So that was the extent of my cybersecurity experience, which was very minimal as I learned going into my actual first job. So I think this first helps target the question of, is cybersecurity hard? So I'm not gonna sit here and say that, that I was able to pick up everything that I learned the first time around. And especially in my first job, I was in a rotation program and every day I felt like I was learning something new. And even to this day, I feel like I'm learning something new. So I wouldn't necessarily say that cybersecurity is hard because I don't want to dissuade you from going into the field but I do think it's something that takes effort to learn and I really think that's going to be the case with any role in tech but as someone who came in with no experience on authentication and LDAP for example which was related to my first project in my first job all those were things I had to learn on the job and there's going to be days where you're going to want to bang your head against your laptop because there's something that you can't figure out but there's also going to be days where kind of like a light bulb moment goes off and then you finally start to understand bit by bit the things that you're working on and all the other things that are interconnected with it. But of course this takes time. I've only been in the field for about three and a half going on four years now and even talking to my teammates or my previous mentors who have been in the field for 10, 15, even 20 plus years. All of them say the same thing that you're always going to be constantly learning and evolving and that's just the nature of the trade. The field of cybersecurity is always changing and if you're looking back five years ago or ten years ago, the same techniques that you use for pen tests, for uh, blue teaming, for purple teaming, they're not going to be the same as they are today. And generally, cybersecurity is a relatively new field compared to all the other trades that are out there, even in tech. A lot of universities are just starting to adopt cybersecurity degree programs in the last five, ten years. My school actually just began their cybersecurity degree program, I think the year before or the year after I graduated. And we're just starting out learning the foundations or the basics of cybersecurity security i would recommend starting out with a cybersecurity course and the one that i typically recommend on my channel is the simply learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity and i also like to thank simply learn for sponsoring today's video so the simply learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity is one of the best ways to get you from the door to get you caught up with all the newest skills as well as all the latest trends in cybersecurity especially since the field of cybersecurity is always growing and expanding it has modules from mit as well as ec council so just to give you an idea of what the course looks like it typically is a six-month course and it has different cohorts starting during different times of the year. It's also an online bootcamp, which is awesome. They have super high ratings on course report as well as switch up. This program also provides you six months free access to the CEH V11 online virtual labs, as well as 24 hacking challenges from EC Council. And the fact that it comes for free with this program is also an awesome perk to have. So if you scroll down, it also gives you some details about the learning path. I love how much they lay out every single section of the course, starting with orientation and then design systems for secure applications, networks, building a hacker mindset, defending against different attacks. And you'll see that this part of the course is designed to be aligned with the CISSP, which is a certification that I'm currently studying for. And then there's also even an elective for a cybersecurity masterclass. And here you can find a list of the different skills that you'll learn that are covered within this course. All these are going to be very important, especially when it comes to hacking concepts, as well as security and risk management, software development security, identity access management. These are going to be very important for you to know going into that job. They also give you some background on the actual professor that is teaching the MIT masterclass course. What's also really interesting is where the program graduates go on to work in the future. So different companies that they worked in, as well as industry trends for job growth opportunities, as well as average salaries to be eligible for this program. We do have a list of qualifications for what candidates should have. You don't have to have a programming background and you also aren't required to have prior work experience. They have admissions counselors that you can talk to if you have any questions about applying to the program. The fee for this cybersecurity certification program is $3,000. And if you guys have watched any of my previous videos on cybersecurity programs and boot camps, you know that many of the boot camps out there are in the five figure range. So $10,000 and above. 
and this program is a fraction of that price they have different financing options their next cohort does start on november 10th so if you're interested in signing up i would definitely check out the link below as soon as you can thank you so much to simple learn for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics so the next thing that really helped me get that hands-on experience is really through sites like hack the box try hack me as well as different capture the flags that i do with my team of course this will depend on the role that you go into in cybersecurity. if you're not necessarily interested in going into the red team then you may not be as keen on practicing on try hack me or hack the box but even for blue teaming there are sites like let's defend.io where you can at least get that practice hands-on experience so you can understand what it's actually going to be like on the job these learning platforms essentially give you that first glimpse into what the job actually entails so that you know what specific roles in cybersecurity that you're most interested in for example maybe you want to be a security engineer and then and you take those foundational cybersecurity courses and then you go on and look up the skills and the tools that, that cybersecurity engineers actually use and in times like this i really think things like youtube and google are your best friends because there's going to be a lot of videos on the tools that cybersecurity engineers use, the types of skills that they need, whether or not they need to learn how to code. All that information is found online in different articles and they really give you a glimpse into what you have to learn and what you actually have to put on your resume to actually get hired into that first job in security engineering in this example. In terms of try hack me and hack the box challenges, they're essentially hacking challenges where they provide you a problem or some kind of box to hack into or usually or just a URL site and you're trying to figure out what you can take advantage of using the tools in your toolkit for example burp suite or nmap or or whatever other tools and skills that you've picked up along the way if you're just starting out i would really recommend going through different walkthroughs of these different hack the box or try hacking tutorials again as a beginner i really don't think it counts as cheating especially when you have no idea where to start there's no need to bang your head against a problem for weeks on end and you just can't figure it out if you don't know the exact skills or the exact tools to use so definitely don't be afraid to look up different walkthroughs of different problems problems that you find on try hack me for example and just see how other people are doing it see see the mindset that they're following and the train of thought so that you understand oh okay so when you hit this kind of problem maybe you can try this kind of solution and if this solution doesn't work then maybe you can try for this one and it really is just a lot of pivoting and trial and error when you are going through different hack the box or different cybersecurity problems in general but this hands-on experience really does help you because when you go into that first interview, they're going to ask you about your experience using different skills or maybe specific tools even. And if the company that you're applying to is using Burp Suite and you already have some experience using it doing a try hack me problem, then it definitely makes it a whole lot easier to talk about it as well as understand where the interviewer is coming from when you've actually used the tool itself. And the next thing is something that I touched on a little bit already, and that is to review job listings that you're interested in and then take a note of the skills and the tools that they're looking for in their candidates. and become their ideal candidate. This is something that I've personally done and something that I, and something I do research on. When I'm applying to specific jobs, I'll also look at the job listings for the different roles, especially in the companies that I want to work for. For example, if I'm applying to a specific company and they're using Burp Suite, for example, then I wanna go and sharpen my skills on Burp Suite so I can put out my resume and going in, know that I at least have that experience using the tool, a good amount of knowledge of what the tool can do and its capabilities, as well as what the tool can't do. So knowing those things, as well as being able to talk about my experience using the tool is going to be really helpful during the interview process because you're likely going to be talking to people on the team, actual security engineers, actual people on the cybersecurity team who are going to be interviewing you and trying to get a gauge of what your experience level is with the tools that they use so that maybe they may still have to train you a little bit but at least you have that foundational knowledge so that you're not starting from scratch. So once you have a good list, I would say about three to four tools or skills on that list that they're asking for is good enough and a good amount to learn before that before that first interview or your first job search and learning these tools can all be done for free on youtube or different or different online courses as well as different walkthrough articles and the cybersecurity community in general in my opinion is the most knowledge sharing based community that i've seen um, along with software engineering and based on my personal experience i know that you can find the material that you need to learn a specific tool even from scratch as a beginner because of the because of the knowledge that other people have already put out there so definitely take advantage of that and once you feel comfortable using those tools at at least a at a decent level i would put those on your resume so you're actually able to get your foot in the door for future interviews for the cybersecurity roles that you want to apply to and a lot of times recruiters and and hiring managers are looking for those specific 
specific keywords or specific skills like nmap or burp suite or bloodhound and if it's on your resume then you're more likely to get dinged or kind of like passed along to the next round so definitely don't forget to update your resume i do have my cybersecurity resume template linked in the description if you want to check that out as well as well as my cover letter template all right, the next thing I want to discuss is keeping up with cybersecurity news and trends. Really feels like I'm fighting the birds to talk here, but but hopefully you guys enjoy this little bit of nature. But yeah, in terms of cybersecurity news, I think this is definitely one of the most important, but also not as often regarded things that you should keep in mind when you're going into cybersecurity because cybersecurity in general is a field that is very much moved by news, definitely more so than data science or software engineering. And I'm sure there's new concepts in cybersecurity that are slower pace like for example for example cybersecurity research or in academia but specifically for cybersecurity news there's a lot of trends and and new hacks and vulnerabilities and exploits that you don't know and you don't learn until you are keeping up with different articles and different cybersecurity blogs and news sites so personally i use feedly which is an rss feed there's many of them out there and i do have my opml file linked below on my patreon everyone can see it it's free you don't have to become a member of my patreon to see it but basically it's just a group of cybersecurity sites that I use to keep up with different news articles and I also don't have to visit multiple sites at once. I can just see them all on my phone in one feed which is really convenient. So you don't have to scroll through it for hours on end because honestly it's a black hole. You're gonna get stuck in there for hours but maybe just every day check out the few highlighted videos or anything that is really big in the news like like a solar winds breach or something those things are the ones that you want to keep up with and the last thing is just to study for a beginner certification this is how i really solidified the foundation of my knowledge and for example i took my security plus certification about a year into my job and that was what helped me so much with just filling in the gaps that i didn't know whether it's from college or a boot camp and the certification just overall makes you very well rounded in my opinion because it covers so many different topics especially general beginner certifications in cybersecurity those cover everything from authentication to to cryptography to malware to everything you can think of under the sun to be honest and if you're interested i can link below a video i made on how i passed my security plus as well as a video i recently made on how to pass your next cybersecurity certification all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below as well as anything that you'd like to add to this list to help the community definitely check out the simply learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity if you're interested and are just getting your foot in the door for cybersecurity in general and the program is linked in my description definitely check that out before the deadline for the november 10th cohort thank you guys so much for watching i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video Bye.